Hello again, I am Jim Bob and welcome back to F1 Manager Challenge Mode, a series where we deliberately make things as tough as we can by adding in a lot of extra rules that we have to follow. Uh, those rules are in the video description down below, so if you're unfamiliar with those, please do check those out. Uh, and of course, we do also keep track of all the developments with the car that we've made as accordance, in accordance to those rules. So you can see where we are and uh, what we can do for the rest of the season. Uh, tonight we are heading to Imola for round four of our second season. Uh, and I can't remember, but I think we might have added a new upgrade to the car. Uh, let me... There we go. Right. Yes, we did get a new front wing. Did we go ahead and buy them? I think we did. Let's take a look at the car. There is our brand new front wing installed on the car. So uh, let's take a look and see exactly where we stand going into this Grand Prix against the rest of the field. Uh, very, very good in the cornering. Uh, our brake calling set a nice little bump. We're up to seventh now. Uh, DRS is pretty good, uh, top speed and acceleration still need a little bit of work, but uh, the car is coming along quite nicely by the look of it. Uh, the teams that we're kind of in contest with, uh, let's have a look at the standings. Uh, we're, we're kind of fighting with Alpine and McLaren again at the moment, uh, according to the points thing. So let's take a look at their cars as well. Uh, so we take a look at Alpine. Uh, they have a faster car in a straight line. Uh, we are slightly better in performance through the corners, but not massively. Uh, they have better DRS than us as well. Uh, so they're going to be tricky to overcome. Uh, let's take a look at uh, McLaren. And McLaren's car is in pretty rough shape. Uh, not the fastest of cars. Not the slowest, but their acceleration is pretty pretty awful. Uh, and their cornering is distinctly average. The DRS is pretty rough as well. So uh, we should hopefully have the beating of McLaren tonight. Uh, evening, Mr. Water. How are you tonight? So let's go ahead and set ourselves some performance targets. Now, uh, don't forget, it's uh, only the top eight that give us points this season. Uh, so ideally we want to try and get into the points, but it is going to be tougher this year. Uh, we're going to get both cars into, let's go top 12. I'm not sure if we're going to be able to manage that, but I'm, I'm, I'm quietly confident. And I think we might have an outside chance of getting uh, uh, into the top 10 with Felipe. Uh, the incentive is the fastest lap. I don't think we'll get that. But I am going to guarantee two cars finishing in the top 10, I think. Let's go for that. Uh, our streaks is just one in the top 15 and two in the top 14 for quali. Well on our way with those. We just need one more race to complete the, the finished position streak and two more to do the quali streak. Even in Farah. Uh, so, one last quick check to see if we've got any points to spend. Oh, we do, with Felipe. Uh, let's see. We want to improve his cornering pace, especially for this circuit. Uh, weather we got to look forward to. Oh, we've got rain on Sunday. So, let me have a quick look at my driver's uh, adaptability. Not great with Freddy. Only 59. And Felipe, oh, even worse, 45. So when we get those transitions from, from light to heavy rain, we're going to really drop off our pace quite dramatically um, against the rest of the field. Uh, and potentially also when it's when it's almost dry, uh, and, but not quite as well. So the sweet spot for us is going to be sort of around one and a half to, to two and a half, three mil of rain or four and a half, five upwards. Uh, anything sort of in between those kind of transitional periods is where we're really going to start to struggle pace-wise. 
Uh, no points for our staff. Uh, we've got all of our facility stuff uh, done. We can't go in there again this season. Uh, Team Hub is 34 days away from a, a refurb. Operationally, there's nothing we can do in here. We do have a maxed out weather sensor. Let's see if that actually helps us this race. Uh, and let's move into the Grand Prix. The hills of Tuscany are green to the south, but here in Imola, the air is red hot. Welcome to Ferrari's turf for the Emilia-Romagna Grand Prix. The track has been around since the 60s, but the first official Formula One race was held here in 1980. Let's see what excitement lies ahead this year. This is Imola, and it's an old school track with plenty of elevation changes and lots of corners. There's only one DRS zone here, but it follows the long straight right before Tamburello and should see plenty of action. At this early stage in the season, there are still plenty of opportunities for things to change. In this sport, there simply are no guarantees. What will happen this weekend? Only time will tell. And then we have confirmation of our weather. Moderate rain forecast for Sunday. So we are going to have a wet race. Yeah, quick swig of drink. Right. Let's take a look at our car parts. Both cars in the same condition. That is good. We are going to start on a set of hard tyres. Uh, we want to do about 20 laps here at Imola for a, a single run. Uh, well, for a double run. And this will get us about 25, 26 minutes worth of running on track. Give us time to get the car tweaked and set up ready for another run of 20 laps afterwards uh, let's take a look at the sliders see where the cars are okay so that's uh felipe's car let's take a quick look at freddy's freddy's looks to be a higher front wing setting so uh let's go with an 8 a 12.5 uh, a 4.6 uh, a 3.45 and a 0 0.05 and let's see how that shakes out and then we'll go a little bit more uh, conservative on the front wing with uh, Felipe well maybe a little bit more aggressive depending on how you want to look at it uh, again we're going to go with a 12.5 we're going to go with uh, a 7 on the front wing a 12.5 a 3.7 uh, a 3.5 and a 0.10 there we go, so a couple of variations in their setup there. And let's go into practice. Radio check. Radio check. Okay, it's green now. Okay, so uh, is anyone running a rookie? Uh, no, don't think they are. No, it's just uh, just R two, and technically they're not rookies anymore. This is their second season. So uh, I was uh, talking recently about Alien Duck Descent and how excited I am for that game. I was browsing Amazon today and I saw um, a pre-order for Dark Descent because it has got a confirmed release date or it's been given a release date. Whether it actually sticks to that is another matter. As you know, as you know games often do get delayed, but it's 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 currently down for a July sorry a June twentieth release 
and uh, the pre-order price on Amazon for a disc copy of the PS5 game is $34.99. So that's that's quite nice. It's uh, it's not going to be a horrendously expensive game. It'll probably be cheaper on PC, but uh, yeah, I'm 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 quietly uh, excited. Well, not not really quietly excited. I'm quietly uh, hopeful that the game is actually going to be pretty good. Uh, I do love um, the Alien franchise and uh, a squad-based RPG, uh, sorry, RTS in the Alien franchise does really appeal to me. So, keep my fingers crossed on that one. Doing any more? We've got an 88 on uh, Freddy's car. That's not bad. Let's see what we get for Felipe. 92, even better. How does it feel? Uh, another mistake for like Felipe right there. there. That's two in the first session. That's slightly worrying. I think we've had a car run wide. Okay, so the front wing is too severe. Uh, so we can bring that down. Let's bring that down to a 6.5. Uh, let's go 4.6 still. Uh, we're going to change that to a 3.5. And we'll change that to a 0. And let's see how that works. No need to change the tyres because we are on hards. Uh, we are going to need to change this a little bit as well. So let's go to a 4.6 on this car as well. Let's pull that in a little bit like that. Go to there. And I think that might possibly be enough of a change to the front wing angle. Uh, we'll try it. We can always make another adjustment if we need to. Yeah, I really hope that the game is released in a, uh, a finished state or you know, as good as it's going to be finished rather than something that's been rushed. I mean, the game was announced for the first time at Gamescom last year uh, and now it's going to be released in just a couple of months. I hope that it's a release schedule that they are uh, dictating rather than uh, a publisher you know, pushing them to release at a certain time. I mean, they're, they're still only sort of started filming on... Have they even started filming the FX TV series? Um, uh, the, I know the movie hasn't got into uh, filming stage yet. It's still in pre-production. So it's not like they're trying to coincide with the release of something. So yeah, hopefully uh, the game is going to release in, in in a finished state, but... Yeah, that is unfortunately the way of the, the industry these days, is that a lot of games do get released unfinished. I suppose you could even argue that this one was was kind of pushed out in an unfinished condition. You know, it does seem to be lacking quite a lot of features that you would expect at least some of those missing features to be in the game, and they have had to make some pretty big performance changes to it because the tyre model just didn't work and the DRS was way too powerful and you couldn't unlap under safety cars, all those had to be patched in over time I really hope that, uh, I mean, but that was kind of pushed um, to release as you know uh, as early as it could How's the balance? to coincide with the season that was going on This is another reason why I hope that um, 
this game stays on a sort of a biannual release window rather than every year uh, as an annual franchise because annual sports franchises generally in my experience provide next to no changes year on year it's usually just a, a roster update and maybe a, a little a little feature that's new but sometimes at the expense of a, of a pre-existing feature and very little else um, and that worries me that flag is now out. if this game goes down that route that it will uh, there will be no real reason to buy it every every year other than an updated roster the PC community won't do won't buy the game if that's the case because they'll just mod in the new liveries and driver moves and stuff like that so it'll fall on the console market and I don't think a lot of console players will go for it which means the franchise will die quite early and uh, that's not what I want to see I really enjoy this game as lacking as it is and I'd love to see it grow properly Okay, we got to 95, and we do still need to tweak the front wing, so let's... Can I get away with an increase in front wing? I don't think I can. Let's drop that to 6.5 as well. Let's just dip that down to there, and let's see if that works. Yeah, right, practice two. Radio check, radio check. Radio check. Every year. Yeah, but Football Manager is a, is a very much a hardcore management game. When I say um, uh, sports franchises, I'm talking games like FIFA, like Madden, like um, NH, uh, NFL and... Um, or, or NHL, um, the 2K basketball games, the WWE games, that kind of thing, that are very sort of uh, graphically intensive. Not like this, you know. It's um, this is kind of graphically intensive. And this is kind of a hybrid between an actual racing game and a management sim, rather than a full-on management sim. As though at least that's the way I look at this game. So, whereas Football Manager, it's got a, a nice little kind of replay system. It's not exactly, um, <laughs> it's not exactly the prettiest um, or the most detailed. So it doesn't need a lot of resources, and it doesn't really need a lot of updates. This requires a lot of updates I mean you just need little men with in, in different colored shirts and that's it you don't really need any details you don't need sponsorship logos or anything like that plus a lot of the, the teams aren't officially licensed in football manager um, so it's not even official badges or uh, anything like that this it's full-on sponsor accurate so liveries uh, driver you know accuracies instead of a, an actual photo they've got a model 3d renders of heads and yeah it's a lot more uh, it's a lot more involved And if you've only got a 12 month, well, I say 12 month, it depends on the size of the team. Uh, teams like uh, Codemasters for the Formula One games that they do, they have two separate teams and one team works on, on one game for two years and then staggers. So the next team works on the, the game that's going to come after that in, in a two year window. So um, the team that starts, that is, is about to release F123 has been working on that for the last two years. Uh, and the team that released last year's game is now a year into the development of F124. 
Um, but I don't think Frontier have got enough resources uh, or budget to allocate two separate development teams to a, an annual update of this, which means you've, you've got to spend all that time um, rebuilding all the visual stuff that needs to be accurate. And that means you've got less time to work on the other stuff that needs to go into the game. And that's that's what worries me about this, being a, an annual franchise. We still haven't heard anything either as to whether this is going to be released this year as a, an F-123. So you know, I'm keeping my fingers crossed that we'll get some kind of update and then we'll get the next edition of the game next year. That would be my preference. Plus they've got new tracks to build. They've got to redo parts of Barcelona because that's getting its new uh, configuration this year. Um, they're removing the uh, Mickey Mouse chicane at the end of the lap and going back to the original cornering, which is nice. It's been a very long time since we've had that. Um, obviously Las Vegas is going to be coming in. Um, We're losing France. That's gone. So all the work they spent building Paul Ricard was just for one game. That's gone. And no doubt there'll be other little tweaks and optimizations they'll need to make to certain circuits as well. They've got to add in uh, LaSalle in uh, Qatar. Uh, this year's Jeddah was slightly different to last year. They've uh, rescaped um, the, uh, the the very fast uh, left-right chicane going into sector three. Um, they reworked the corner entry there, so that's going to need to be reflected in the next game. So yeah, all sorts of little things that are intensive, and every one of those changes takes away from actually improving the game in terms of time and resources. After a day of free practice yesterday, we wrap up with a third and final session before moving on to qualifying. Uh, yeah, France has gone and it almost will certainly be down to money. Um, that's how it is uh, in Formula One. You know, the fees involved to host a Grand Prix are astronomical and uh, some of them more than others. Okay, we're going to go for a 30 lap run. We won't need that much, I don't think, but Jim looking at the track acclimatization, we're definitely not going to need that much. Let's drop it down to 26 laps. Uh, and this will be hopefully the one and only run we need to make. France has gone missing from the calendar before. Um, Germany's currently not on the calendar. Uh, that used to be a staple. The old Hockenheim ring going through the uh, the Black Forest. And then obviously they, uh, they left Hockenheim for a while. For, for many, many years. And they went to uh, the Nürburgring. And they raced there. Uh, and then they reworked the uh, beginning of the Nürburgring. And we raced there for um, uh, a few more years. Then we went to the new um, butchered version of the Hockenheim ring. And, and now we don't go to Germany at all.
And let's not forget, Silverstone was always a threat for most of the 2010s. <laughs> you know, uh, Bernie trying to find a way to get rid of it. Uh, no, not the 2010s, sorry, the, uh, the 2000s. Wanting more and more money. Uh, and the only reason Silverstone stayed on the calendar was because they promised a massive overhaul of the facilities and uh, and redesigned the track layout. And Silverstone's one of those, uh, one of the few circuits in the world that doesn't have any kind of government funding. Uh, there are a lot of circuits out there on the calendar that do get some kind of funding from uh, from their nation's government to actually host the events. Uh, Silverstone does not. So there was threats of going to Donington uh, or to Brands Hatch or just removing Britain from the calendar altogether. Evening, Anthony. How does it feel? As you can imagine, Formula One fans, British fans in particular, <laughs> it has to be said, uh, were up in arms about that because Silverstone the is the spiritual home of Formula One. Like two or three of the teams actually have their bases at Silverstone or close to. Most of the teams in Formula One have a base here in the UK. Uh, the only ones that don't, Ferrari, obviously, uh, in uh, in Italy. Uh, Alpha Tauri uh, are also in Italy. Uh, but there has been speculation about them being relocated to the UK. Um, uh, recently um, Haas have um, a base in the States but uh, or a satellite base in the States and they also have a satellite base uh, in Italy uh, at Ferrari they uh, rent facilities from Ferrari but uh, all the other teams Williams, McLaren, Mercedes Red Bull um they're all based here. Even Alpine, I think, is based here. Well, Alpine might be in France, I'm not sure. But that's at least half the grid that's based here in the UK. So to not have a Grand Prix in this country would be a travesty. Right, our cars are set up, our drivers are prepped, there's nothing more to do now except uh, get ourselves through quality and then uh, have some fun in the rain. Good session. All right, so, so we, sh we should comfortably get through Q1 uh, as long as we don't have traffic issues. All right, we get through Schumacher, no problem there. And it might be a problem for Vesti. Uh, don't think so. Uh, very close together between the two. I think Felipe may have possibly been held up slightly more. Um, but good times. 
We're faster than Norris, which is encouraging. We're faster than uh, the Alpha Tauri. Who's Very close to Sainz. Did Sainz get held up? Or are we really that fast with that new front wing? Do you get George Russell to the plate to replace Gasly? Um, ooh, well, um, based on the evidence of our Williams playthrough, I would have to say yes. He is a bit more consistent than Gasly. He's less aggressive, so he's less likely to make mistakes. Um, doesn't quite have the pace of Gasly, um, but has better smoothness. It's a tough call. Um, I think his uh, XP climb is slightly higher than Gasly because he's a little bit younger. And, um, yeah, if you want an English driver at Aston Martin, then, yeah, <laughs> Russell is an obvious choice. Uh, let's make sure I've actually got some tyres on the car. <laughs> that might help. There we go. Go out for another run just to be on the safe side. We should be fine, but yeah, I just want to make sure. Oh, yeah. Comfortably, comfortably through. We're actually slightly faster than Ocon, which is good. Not far off uh, Alonso either. Even Curry. Okay, so I'm going to do a scrub run, which is going to be massively off the pace. And then we'll do a proper run at the end of the session. our scrubs get a time on the board let's get those uh, brand new tires prepped and ready Someone's run wide. and uh, based on the evidence of Q1 there's a very good chance we're gonna get both cars into Q3 which is nice especially with there's gonna be rain in the race the higher up we can start the better So, assuming there's no mistakes, both of our drivers are going to massively improve on these brand new tyres. Let's see where we do actually qualify. Again, Ferrari lagging behind the Red Bulls. Max just far and away faster than the rest of the field. It's 
teams are going to start bringing big upgrades from Barcelona onwards. So there might be a couple of small upgrades here and there, but generally I think Barcelona is where we're going to see the biggest ones start to drop in. And that's where we might see some changes to the pace of the grid. Okay, Vesti sneaks into 10th, which means he's going to get knocked out by Felipe. Yep, there we go. Uh, Felipe in 7th, again, just very close to Alonso. That's encouraging. Faster than Russell. So we've achieved our quality objective of getting uh, two in the top 12 and one into Q3. How high can we actually get Felipe? Uh, there is a wet race, um, so there's a chance that we're going to need multiple sets of softs. So I'm just going to do one run on these scrubs and see where we end up. Okay, here we go. I'm probably going to lose about a tenth by not running brand new tyres. Maybe a little bit more than a tenth. But like I said, with that uh, with that rain on the race, there's every chance that if it falls early-ish and then dries up, that we all need, or, you know, have, you know, we could use two sets of softs, depending on how long that rain lasts for. So, we can keep two brand new sets. That's going to stand us in good stead for the race. Give us an advantage over the rest of the field in terms of tyre wear, especially everyone here in the top 10 because they'll have no brand new sets of soft tyres. We'll have two. A 1.15.3 for Perez. Verstappen yet to set his time. It's coming around the last corner now. Up to the line. He's behind Hamilton. And a 115.0. So not quite as quick in this session as he was in uh, Q2. Oh, thank you, Farrah. That's very kind of you. Where are we going to end up? Sixth? Wow! I did not expect us to actually get up, <laughs> up to sixth on scrubs. I'm, I'm very happy with that. Here we are, folks. We're back for another day of scintillating F1 action. It's race day. There was some good work from Aston Martin during the qualifying session, and they will go to the grid full of confidence. Although we didn't see a standout performance from Alpine during qualifying, everything's still open to them during this race. There's been some light rainfall throughout the day, which means that teams will want to make good use of the intermediate tyre. And seeing it all come together is sure to be a thrill. An exciting race ahead for us here at the Emilia Romagna Grand Prix. Okay, looks like we might be starting in the wet. 
We are. Okay. Uh, let's take a look at strategy. Uh, oh, it's going to be wet for almost the entire race, if not the entire race. There's a chance that we might dry out right in the dying laps. Okay, so we're going to have to make a stop for Inters. Uh, so let's go ahead with a two stop. And then obviously we'll just change that to Inters and that to Inters and then that to Softs. Um, we might not even use those softs but if we kind of plan it around that right, let me take that off yeah so we can comfortably make two sets of uh, enters work let's add those soft tires back on So we're going to be looking to stop around about lap 28. Now the AI will probably run their inters longer um, before they pit, which gives us an opportunity to maybe undercut, but then they'll obviously come back at us with much more grip when they do make their stops. Uh, I am going to take a lap of fuel out. And I'm going to go aggressive with battery and tyres for the first lap or so. Or maybe not even the full first lap, maybe just the first half a lap. Just want to make sure that in those side-by-side -side situations, we actually have the chance to get ahead. Because track position in the rain, especially if with fluctuating water levels, is going to be crucial for us. So, let's go racing. We have a little bit of rain here. I expect most of the teams are hoping that's as bad as it gets. Taking a look at the Aston Martin. They're in the front half of the pack, so there's plenty of potential for them. There's the second Aston Martin. With their starting position in the back 10, they'll have their work cut out for them. Will their hard work pay off today? I still remember the first... The crowd uh... are on their feet in anticipation of this. The Emilia Romagna Grand Prix. It's lights out and away we go. I still remember, not the first time, but the second time we raced at Imola with Williams. And it was Gasly's first time there, and oh, what a bonkers race that was, where we screwed up on our tyre strategy, and it looked like we were going to lose out massively. And then the AI made some weird tyre strategy choices, and oh, yeah, that was a great race. Really, really unpredictable. I wonder if we're going to see more of that today. Uh, Vesti's up on Gasly, that's excellent. That uh, DRS and tyre wear did help us out there. And now we're up on the Ferrari. We're up on the inside of sights. Good work from Vesti here. That's it. And he's up on Ocon. This is good to come on. Aston Martin with a great play there. He's trying to have a go at uh, Felipe, who's all over the back of uh, Perez. And he gets Perez. Beautiful. Back up to six for Felipe. So we're happy to let these tyres cool a bit. Copy. Doing a good Still job stuck side by side. We've got a yellow flag. It looks like Aston Martin have just gained a race position. Oh, it's a crash with multiple cars. One of the McLarens involved. I think there's been contact on the track. Let's take a closer look. Daniel Ricciardo involved here. Oh, don't tell me he hit his teammate. Oh, he did. He committed the cardinal sin. You never hit your teammate. Oh, man, Hamilton's just flying. What's going on with Max? Is he on the wrong tyres? He's on wets. No wonder. 
I didn't even think anyone would start on wets. We just cannot find a way through at the moment. The sixth and seventh. Until someone breaks the dam of there we go. Russell and Leclerc both passed the snap and that's gonna open the floodgates for the rest of us to try and have a run at him. I think Alonso's about to get him up the hill. We'll try and follow that through. Vesti's up to sixth now, ahead of Felipe. He's just on fire at the moment. Let's get him into some clean air. Oh, Felipe ran wide. That's not good. Look at that! They've run wide! Let's have a look. Let's have a look here. This was the Aston Martin. They've taken that far too wide. Oh, a huge loss of momentum. We've only lost the one place. That's good. All right, Vesti is through. Gasly spinning. Now look at this. It's Pierre Gasly. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. The car's just gone. It's lucky he was on the outside of the exit of that chicane, not the inside, otherwise he would have taken his teammate. All right. Now Drogovic is gonna have a run at uh, Max and gets him. And we're running fifth and seventh. This is amazing. I'm, I'm, I'm a little concerned about... Ah, uh, that's why there's a big spike of rain about to hit. But it's not going to last very long. So Verstappen, Perez, Stroll, Vettel, Albon and Joe have all gambled on wets and it has failed. And you can see their tyres. I mean, we pushed our tyres hard for two laps, which is why ours are lower than everyone else's. Um, but the, uh, the wets which are super durable. You can see their tyres are, are low as well because they're just overheating. There's just not enough water. Now the rain is starting to increase a little bit. Let's see. Let's see what happens. How high is it going to go? As Red Bulls are suddenly going to start getting very competitive again, Max especially. And this is where we are going to struggle in these changing conditions. Our drivers are going to really start to lose ground. So keep an eye on the gap uh, in front and below on Vesti and you'll see it start to change. We're going to start dropping back to Alonso. Sainz is going to start closing in. Drogovic as well is going to start coming under pressure from Ocon. We're into full wet territory now. Max is going to start coming back at us. And Ocon just sails past us because our drivers just don't have the skill in this condition, in these conditions, to really get the best out of the car. So Drogovic is going to lose massive amounts of time now. Because he's got the worst adaptability out of our two drivers. He's less than 50. You see Bottas swarming all over the back of him. And Max, obviously, on those wets, is uh, harrying the pair of us. Vesti has dropped massively back from Alonso. who's on the same tyres as us. Don't forget, we've gone from being a second and a half behind to three and a half seconds behind by the time we start the next lap. Sight's all over the back of us. And it's still getting wetter. We need this rain to start easing off ASAP. Max is just going to swallow us both up here. And so is Perez. Perez is in this as well now. Don't forget, he's on full wets as well. There goes Max. Bottas trying to follow him through. Red 
this one's gone wide. It's uh, Norris, who's having a horrible start to the race. <laughs> Taken out by his teammate. Now he's uh, had a, an issue at the end of the lap. Russell with an error as well. Sainz has got past uh, Vesti and uh, is already pulling away like crazy. Perez has got us now. We're still in front of Bottas. Another yellow flag in sector three. Oh, Verstappen with a mistake. Now here we see Max Verstappen. That's not that bad. He's going to be blisteringly quick in these conditions. Bestie holding up a, a little queue of traffic here. And the rain level is starting to tick down. That's P11. Yeah, Drogovic is just bleeding positions at the moment. Looks like that was a position gained for Alfa Romeo. Really need that water level to come down so our drivers can get more comfortable again. Still a good start, generally. I mean, uh, despite the change from inters to wets, and now heading back towards inters again in terms of water level. We've come out of it pretty well. Um, Vesti, the big winner so far, he started 11th, is now up to 8th. Drogovic, the big loser, started 6th, now down to 12th. We did really kind of get held up by uh, the Red Bulls at the start when they were struggling on those wet tyres, but now they're flying. So they've only got another couple of laps of that before they start to struggle again. just can't hold off Ocon again it's it's not the car it's it's the drivers not having um, very good adaptability uh, so in these conditions they really do drop off the pace massively uh, as the track will dry up they'll become more competitive again but until we get down to about three and a half maybe even three on the water we're going to be slow and not just in comparison to wet ride, uh, wet cars, but inters as well, other inters. Drogovic has got so much more pace than Vettel and Bottas, but he's just not able to put the, put that power down. Now he's being threatened by Schumacher. He's been passed by Schumacher. That's no, right, Magnussen. Schumacher's right behind us. Drogovic with a an adaptability of 45 just absolutely dropping like a stone but now we're into inter conditions again we should start to see an increase in pace
and we've got a long time till the next spike. That's good. Need to start clawing back some of that ground we've lost. Schumacher's having a look. Okay, we're almost, almost there. As uh, Vettel and Joe get off those wet tyres onto Inters. Are we going to see Red Bull stay out, or are they going to pit? We've seen them do very strange things in this game in the past. Are they going to stay out on the wets again? Yellow flag in sector three. Who's that for? Science. That helps us. Yeah, he loses some ground there. <laughs> Just uh, sticking a couple of wheels in the gravel. Let's have a quick check in with uh, Freddy. Still ahead of Bottas. Track still slowly drying up. We're still slower than we than we could be. But once the, say once the track gets down to about three or below, we're going to start really picking up our pace again. Vesti will recover quicker because his adaptability is a little bit higher, is it not 53? That's why he's half a second faster than his teammate, which is very, you know, unheard of. One twenty-eight five, no, one twenty-seven three for Ocon, one twenty-seven three for Vesti. So Vesti's there. He's now back on the pace. What can? Uh, Drogovic do. He's already pulled the gap again to Schumacher. He's now lapping faster than uh, Magnussen and faster than Schumacher. So he's going to start moving back up through the field again. And hopefully Vesti's going to start catching Ocon now. So let's start looking at the gaps again. What are the Red Bulls doing time-wise now? They're doing 127s. But they're going to be even slower this lap. Six eight to one twenty seven four for Perez. So Perez is at risk from Sainz. Vesti now lapping faster than Ocon. Drogovic definitely lapping faster than Magnussen. Eight tenths of a second faster. He's halved the gap. Start putting a little bit more battery back in the car again. Now that we're into conditions that's going to favour our car again. We just need to charge up. Yeah, copy.
hoping the Red Bulls are going to start holding everyone else up. Hey, Farah. Hamilton is leading by 11 and a half seconds. Oh, I can feel the anger from here. <laughs> oh, no. Vesti ran wide. Ah. Uh. That's karma. <laughs> Wind up Farrow and immediately pay the price on track. <laughs> Alfa Romeo just moved up a place. All right, so both our drivers now pretty much on screen together. Thanks to that, uh, that little side trip to the gravel. Worst stream so far. <laughs> It's enough battery for Vesti and for Felipe. Let's uh, try and start closing those gaps again. So Verstappen is currently 2.7 seconds slower than Sainz. And Ocon is 2.7 seconds faster than him behind. Perez is really struggling. 129.4. He's four seconds slower than Bottas right now. Bottas all over the back of him already. And we're only four seconds off that, so we should start closing in on that very soon. If Bottas can't get past him. Just trying to get him up the hill, look. Can't get through. Now he's through, but uh, he's lost a, a little bit of time, and we are all up on the back of Perez already. Let's use some battery to have a go at getting past uh, Magnussen here. We just set a new fastest lap without even trying. Aston Martin with a great play there. They've moved up a place. Well, no, we used a little bit of battery at the end, so I suppose technically we tried a little bit. Terrible. Perez blocked us. Oh, that's brave going up the inside of Aqua Minerali. Vesti's like past Max. Have just gained a race position. That's it. And look how quickly we got on the back of Magnussen there. No, oh, we've got a crash. Ricardo and Schumacher have come together. Who's that that just crashed? Let's take a closer look. So let's look at this. There's Sergio Perez. On oh, Perez is at a problem as well. 
Oh! So it's Schumacher hitting Perez. Of course, that's Ricardo's penalty for hitting his teammate earlier. Okay, we're out of battery. That's not so good. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. Got them both. So back up to eighth and ninth. It's good. Evening, Colin. Track conditions are absolutely perfect for us right now. Uh, is Vesti faster than Bottas? He is by half a second. And now that we're clear with Drogovic, once he gets a little bit more battery in his car, he'll start pushing even faster. Just going to do one more lap on charge. I kind of want to taunt Farah again about Hamilton, but I'm very wary of what happened last time. <laughs> hey Farah, Aston Martin explodes. No! for Felipe to start stretching his legs. That was a very weird, weird way of saying Felipe. Caught in two minds there to say Felipe and Freddy at the same time. Came out as Felipe. We've just had a car run wide. Perez really struggling and Red Bull have not We're got off those wets yet. They are still running the wrong tyres. And they're massively slow. Verstappen a 131.7 last lap. It's going to be even slower this lap, I think. 132.3. Perez is just nowhere. With his running wide, he's going to be like a 136. One thirty three nine. So Rebel are going for the most ridiculous strategy in the world. <laughs> we are about to get another rain spike in a couple of laps. Verstappen drops another place, this time to Norris. Don't forget, Vettel started on the full wets as well. He's pitted for Inters, and he is now gaining and getting ready to pass Verstappen. Uh, Alonso goes wide. That's going to drop him off the front a little bit. Hold up sights. Oh, now Alonso goes wide again. Under pressure, it just uh, buckles to the Ferrari there. Oh, they've run wide. It's so nice when you start flipping through the field like this and then you just catch something happening. Oh, 
Let's see if Alonso can put the pressure on Sainz, or maybe he's going to lock up and and spear into the back of uh, Sainz here. He's already made two mistakes in the space of a few corners. Ah, Vesti is in... Ah, damn it. Vesti could have been driving so much faster. It's a legacy when I was trying to find my way past uh, Perez there. Drogovic now pulling away from Magnussen. Caps up to 1.2. I think we kind of got away with Vesti driving in clear air there because he wasn't close to anybody. So it wasn't really being triggered. And here comes the rain again. So, are we going to see the Red Bulls? We are currently 18th and 20th. Suddenly start to climb back up through the field again. Depends. I don't think so. I don't think this rain spike is going to be as severe. At least according to the, our prediction here. And it still says it's going to stay damp according to this. So, might not be wet enough in, at all. Might not even hit full wet conditions here. As Schumacher is all over the back of Verstappen right now. I kind of want to watch this. Max, who has absolutely dominated the opening races of the season, is uh, about to drop to 19th place. Okay, Max's tyres are going to start becoming competitive about now. So he might actually hold Schumacher off. Yeah, I think he's going to hold him off now. We're going to start dropping back again soon. Need the uh, water level to level off. Like any second. We've got one car in the points right now. Okay, the the, uh, the ticker is slowing down. So we're not going to hit full wets, I don't think, but it is still too wet for us to really be competitive. Our times are going to start dropping. You see, we're losing ground to Bottas again. Magnussen has already gained eight tenths of a second on Drogovic. And there we go. Starting to tick down again already. So, yeah, Red Bull have basically screwed. I don't think it's ever going to hit conditions where their wet tyres are going to be good. What's the condition of their tyres? Oh, it's pretty... Oh, Perez's tyres are awful. He got hit, didn't he? He took a lot of damage to his tyres. So Perez is going to be pitting probably pretty soon to get onto a set of inters. But Verstappen may well stay out until his tyres are around 30-40%. There's Perez in the pits right now, actually. I want don't tell me he's going to go on to another set of wets. Let's let's see. He's going on another set of wets. What the? <laughs> what are Red Bull doing? Oh my god! <laughs> Why did he not put on enters? 
We're about to lap Perez. There we go, that was us. There's us again. This is crazy. I mean, the, the water level's creeping back up again, but even so... Oh my days. Uh, Gasly and Magnussen fight each other rather than uh, us. It's the acceleration out of the corners where we really struggle in conditions like this. Our drivers are just so tentative on the uh, on the throttle, and uh, Gasly's going to get us here. It's just going to swoop past us. Look, there he goes. So down to tenth. Hopefully, we can hold Magnussen back. The track is starting to dry up again. But uh, Vesti, having been slightly faster than the Bottas, is now over a second slower per lap. Drogovic, you know, nearly two seconds slow, uh, nearly a second slower than his teammate. Again, this is that adaptability that I was telling you about. In conditions where it's it's in this kind of crossover period, it's when drivers with low adaptability are awful. And much as I would love to increase their adaptability, it's yeah, there aren't that many races that are wet across the full calendar. You just have to take the pain in those races and hope that you don't lose out too much. It's a very low prior priority for us to boost their adaptability. Much more important is their braking, their cornering, their accuracy, their reactions. Those stats are so much more important. potentially even their control as well although I think once their pace settings are done I am going to start boosting their accuracy because you know while there aren't many wet races in the calendar there are enough that it will have a significant impact if we are trying to go for you know points as is evident in this race And there goes uh, Magnussen. Let's focus. So we're going to have all that hard work that we did at the start, which was undone by changing conditions. But we then had to do again. It's been undone again. We've now got to do it a third time. As the truck dries up again. And it's not going to dry up as much this time, so we're not going to be quite as fast. And we have got one more little spike of, of uh, water to come. But once that's out of the way, we will be very quick. And if we can get onto dries, we'll be very, very quick. We're getting close to our pit window. I don't want to push the drivers just yet. I want the track to get a little drier before I start pushing them again. But I am going to probably push their tyres. I might extend their stint slightly by a couple of laps. Oh, Perez is in the pits. He's on Inters. My God, he's finally pitted for Inters. Verstappen's on Inters as well. It's uh, only taken them 25 laps to realise they're on the wrong tyre. <laughs> McLaren, gain a position. 
Oh, God, Ricardo's got us as well. We will get Ricardo back in the pits because he's got a penalty to serve for clobbering Norris, but, yeah, we are just struggling so much. Vesti in kind of clean air at the moment. No one really threatening in front or behind, but we are still losing time to the Alfa Romeos quite heavily. And, say, so Drogovic is just dropping like a stone right now. We might as well just go for it with Felipe. Try and undo some of that uh, performance loss. And then get him onto a set of uh, fresher inters earlier than, uh, than Freddy. Now we're a second slower than Ricardo. Second and a half slower than Norris. He's going to be uh, haunting us down. Oh, we do seem to be sticking with him. Now that we're pushing the tyres. So let's do that with Freddy as well. Let's start holding back Gasly. We just need to push now. Because he is closing us pretty quickly. And let's start trying to close back some of that gap to, to Bottas. Probably going to run these tyres down to around about 50% and then we'll box. Might come in slightly earlier than that. I don't know. It, it depends on what the track level's like. Kind of want to have the best tyres available to maximise our pace in the better conditions. We are all over the back of Ricardo now. We're going to actually have a go with him here by the look of it. Yeah, we found some pace again, look. We've definitely found some pace again now that we're pushing. the uh, chicane yes we can excellent so we'll out drag him here with DRS but well, not with DRS sorry ERS battery uh, and now we're ready to make a run on Magnuson both my drivers this lap we're getting into conditions that's really going to help us okay box box, box. so if we've got a lot more grip than the rest of the field we will eat into that uh, that gap very quickly
Copy that. So use pit limiter, pit limiter. So I'm hoping we're going to get a nice little undercut on the rest of the field. Okay. Copy that. They are going to have to pit at some point, and when they do, they're going to be very fast, because they're going to have a lot more grip than we're going to have. But for the next 10 laps or more, we're going to be in a very strong position grip-wise compared to them. And I'm hoping that when it comes to them pitting, we will jump quite a few of them. It depends on what happens with track conditions again. If the if the weather changes again and water level shoots back up again, we are going to lose time. But just got to roll those dice. for someone in sector one. They've gone wide! Here's the replay. Now, just watch the Mercedes here. Ah, I just hit the, uh, the sausage curbs. I wonder if that's damaged the underside of his car. Take it easy. Might seem wrong driver. <laughs> They're looking at a one two here. You do realise that, you know. It's getting very close to Leclerc losing a position. Ah, Russell's had another mistake. Oh, did someone run wide there? The same corner, I think. Look at the replay. Now, no, wait, not the same corner. George Russell. But he's, well, uh, yeah, he's pushing hard. Looks like Aston Martin. Okay, so there we go. We've got a 123.7 for Vesti. We are the fastest on track right now. A 123.4 for Drogovic, but he was battering. And we've got the right tyres. The brand new right tyres at the right time. Look at the, the track level. It's less than 2 mil. We're going to be really, really using our tyres to the best of, uh, of their pace. We are eating into that gap of Norris. Let's take a look at everyone else's tyres. They're in the 50s right now. I wonder who's going to be the first to blink. We're not okay on fuel. Be fine.
We are definitely hunting down Norris at a pretty substantial rate here. Seven tenths on the last lap. Drogovic a second faster than Vettel. I could push the tyres, but I don't really want to. Because we've got to make them last longer than everyone else is going to have to make their next set of tyres last. Fastest lap for Freddy. And Felipe says, oi, that's mine. There is Norris, hunting him down. Is that Hamilton behind us? No. It's Vettel and one of the Red Bulls. It's Perez. Second a lap faster than Norris. We're going to be on him this lap. Drogovic about a second a lap faster than uh, Vettel. He's going to be on him in a couple of laps. You can use energy. I want to get past him as quickly as possible here. Happy to push. That water level is starting to uh, fluctuate a little. It crept back up. It's dropping again, but looks like we've got more rain coming in three minutes. Norris is going defensive, he's blocking us. Got him now. Or maybe not. That McLaren is faster than us in a straight line, I think. We are much better in the corners. And we're going to get him on the uh, approach to Tosa. There we go. We're through. So that costs us a little bit. That's it. Aston Martin with a great play there. They've moved up a place. Drogovic within two seconds now of Vettel. Let's cut to him. He's going to have some work to do in a moment. Perez should dive out of the way of us. Don't have any battery to push with, but uh, we do have some tyres if we need them.
Bestie says, I'm going to take the fastest lap. Thank you very much. And here comes that water. And all that hard work. Is it going to get undone again? That's why it was so crucial to get ahead of Norris as quickly as possible. is getting out of the way. Water level's back up above three already. Uh, so watch that gap to Norris start to shrink rapidly. The only thing that's going to help mitigate that is the fact that we do have much better tyres right now. It's another reason why I wanted to get those tyres on before this little jump in, in uh, water level came. We're already suffering in the traction zones. Come on, dry up quickly. This is the last real spike. It's going to start getting drier and drier and drier after this. Pace wise we're not losing out as much as we were last time round because of the better tyres. Most of the teams in the 40s now. Someone's locked up. Sector one. Oh, that's a that's a safety car. Oh. Oh, interesting. Oh, we can get our batteries it's a collision. done. Are we going to see any cars dive into the pits? Safety if they car. do, are they going to go for full Keep wet? Car in the Ricardo's pitting. Sorry. And Norris is pitting. They're going into us. Norris is going to go for inters as well, I think. Vettel's going to come in probably for inters. <sighs> Norris is suffering so bad that penalty for Ricardo. There goes Ricardo finally. Yeah, the front wing change as well. Norris lost out massively there. Magnussen got taken out. I didn't see who triggered it. Norris is on inters. Albon's on inters. Vettel's gone full wets. Even Jeremy. Albon's gone full wets as well. Oh, that's them screwed. What are, what are Rebel going to do? Are they going to do anything? Front runners are coming in. I'm seeing Inters on Sainz and Alonso and Ocon. Bottas is going into us. I'm sure Gasly's going to go into us as well. Good news for Farah. Hamilton's lead's going to disappear. Even better news for Red Bull is they're going to get to the ability to unlap themselves. Alright, so we're back up to 8th and 10th. 
So we've got one car back in the points. Our tyres are now slightly worse than the rest of the field, but... <coughs> Actually, we've got a really big gap from uh, Felipe to uh, Vettel because he's on the wets. I'm going to box both drivers and give them a, a new set of uh, inters. We're going to lose one position. Box, box. So we're going to lose one position to Gasly. Box, box. But we've got such a gap to Vettel because of those wet tyres. He's uh, struggling at the moment. That we can get both cars in and out before he gets anywhere near us. Even if we catch the safety car. Which I don't think we're going to do. And we've got an 11, 12 second gap, so we might actually possibly get out ahead of Gasly. It's going to be close. Oh no, it's it's a bit less, it's 8 seconds. Oh, time that really well, look. So make sure you get your pit limiter, pit limiter as you come in the pit lane. Yeah, Gasly's going to get us. Pit lane. Yeah, copy. But now we're back on level pegging grip-wise with the rest of the field. We're just outside the, posi the points positions, but I'm happy to sacrifice one position for 15% more grip. And equal terms with the teams in front that we will have better pace against. You know, as the track continues to dry out. So that was, I think, the right strategic call. Of energy. Both to make that initial stop when we did, so that we could really maximise the position that we were in, and then obviously uh, the safety car kind of changed things a bit. But yeah, we're in a good position. And there's Vettel, slowly eking up to the back of us. He's going to have to box again. Albon's already boxing now to get rid of those uh, full wets. He's gone on to Inter, so you've got to imagine Vettel's going to box this lap. What about the Williams? Are they going to box as well? Got to imagine they're going to. At least one of them anyway. Stroll's still trying to find his way through the uh, safety car. He's stuck behind Hamilton right now. Now oh, Joe's staying out. What about Stroll? Is Stroll going to dive in? Stroll stays out as well. Oh, and this is screwing up Perez because he can't overtake. Because for whatever reason, Stroll isn't trying to unlap himself. Oh, oh is this going to knacker up the safety car? Is this going to be the running order until... Is the safety car going to come in if all the lap cars haven't unlapped themselves? I've never seen this happen before. I don't know if this is a bug or I don't know what's going on. If it, it, It's a conflict between the two tyres. Because Stroll's on the full wets and it's too slow, way too slow for full wets. So Inters get priority whenever uh, it gets to two cars side by side the uh, when the, the track gets this dry 
the full wets just automatically pull over and let the inters through. But Perez can't overtake because he's under the safety car. So he can't unlap himself. And Stroll hasn't got the pace because he's on the wrong compound of tyres to unlap himself. Despite the instruction to do so. So unless he pits. He's just going to keep sitting there. And I don't know if that's going to stop the safety car from coming in. Or I don't know what's going to happen. He's got to pit, surely, this lap he's going to pit. Look how dry the track is. If we were a little bit closer to that drying out period, I would have gambled for softs. If we stay stuck like this for several more laps, I may possibly <laughs> gamble for softs. If we get to the point where it starts drying up. There we go, he dives into the pits and now Perez can unlap himself, finally. But Perez is screwed. I can imagine Joe's going to come in now. He's the only one left on the wet tyres. Safety car's probably going to come in at the end of this lap. Yeah, there's Yo boxing. So he's going to be going on to Inters. See just how slow we were waiting for an unlap that was never going to happen. A two minute lap. Because the safety car slows down a little bit when uh, it gives the instruction to let cars through. So the whole field immediately just surged forward a little bit the second that uh, Stroll dived into the pits. And there's safety a safety car, car in coming lap. in. Safety car will be in this lap. So we just need to push now. Yeah, I'm You can use energy. Use energy. You can use energy. Copy. Push more. Yep. Energy if you need it. Copy, copy. And when we restart overtaking, we'll be from the control line. Copy. Okay, here we go. Got Vesti lined up to try and have an immediate run at Gasly. Felipe is going to have a go at Vesti. Go on, dive up the inside. There you go. Do it again. Fantastic. So we've got both cars past Gasly. And now we're about to get Bottas by the look of it. Swoops around the outside. That was a brave overtake there. Can we dive up the inside of Ocon? Not quite. Aston Martin with a great play there. They've moved up a place. as Drogovic dies up the inside of Bottas there. Beautiful stuff. Good job.
Go on, have a run into Tosa. Ah, not quite. Maybe up the hill. Side by side. We got him. That's it. We think this rain should ease off. Okay, okay, that's the dry weather prediction. Would like to get these overtakes done without Just destroying our batteries. Copy. Why I put them back on charge? But I'm going to push uh, Drogovic here. Use energy. Copy. I nearly made it work. Nearly. Alright, let's uh, consolidate the battery again. We're running well at the moment. We've got both cars in the points. Sixth and eighth. That will be very important for us. Stappen's got himself back up to 15th. I will have a look at that battle for you in a moment. I just want to obviously focus on our battles right now. Two separate uh, Mercedes Ferrari battles going on here. Russell is uh, holding off Sainz. And as we've seen, performance between the Mercedes and the Ferrari this season is um, almost identical.
and Mercedes are only going to get stronger given that they've got Diego Tondi as their head aero guy now no fastest lap for Felipe See if we can get him on the exit of Tosa. Rain, all clear. Copy. Use energy if you need it, use energy. Yeah, copy. This is where track position is going to be king. When it comes to these pit stops, onto the slicks. Ah, oh, Alonso driving incredibly cannily, just blocking the moves. But Alpine's fast in a straight line and it's going to get a tow from the Ferrari in front. I don't know if we're actually going to be able to make that move. Uh, let's have a crack and see if we can get past Ocon here. Come on up the inside. Into the chicane, go on. Squeeze up the inside. Do what you yes, the there we go. Cool. Oh, he just snuck ahead of us on the on the traction there. Have a lunge. You're doing a good job, keep pushing. Hamilton takes the fastest lap. We just don't quite have enough acceleration. So we're going to have to do it in the pits. One of the reasons I wanted to try and get my drivers, you know, further up the field was just so it creates more of a gap between them so they don't get held up in the pits because we're going to have to go for the double stack, I think. I might leave one of them out there. I've got to go... I've got to go Vesti first, I think. Starting to drop back while we're charging. We knew that a, a straight fight in dry conditions with uh, Alonso was always going to be tough. He was slightly faster than us in quali uh, for most the most part. We did pinch him slightly in uh, Q3, but. Yeah, the Alpine is a pretty uh, pretty fast car. Very similarly sort of matched to us in the grand scheme of things. And obviously their drivers are better than ours.
looks like we're going to be boxing end of the next lap. As long as I can keep these cars behind me and I don't lose position. For one more lap, I'll be happy. That's enough battery for Vesti. Let's give Drogovic one more lap. Closest Leclerc's been in a while. I'm going to double stack. Ah, uh, I missed it. I think. Yeah, confirm. Confirm. Yeah, I missed it. Oh, I didn't react quick enough. is pretty dry so don't damage these tires especially high speed yeah copy drs enable Should see a flurry of activity in the pits. Ocon dives in. Both the Alphas are coming in. Oh, Verstappen's coming in. Oh, this this is going to be interesting with the leaders. All right, we did not get held up. That is important. Here comes Vesti. Oh, wow. Okay, that did not work out for Freddy. We did box him maybe a lap too early. But it's kind of worked out for us because we've got the faster of our two drivers That's in front of the other one. Moved up a place. No <laughs> yeah, Hamilton is pulling away. But here we go. It's the all important pit stops. Oh, Hamilton got held slightly. Leclerc also got held slightly for Hamilton. Sainz in as well. So it's a double stop for Ferrari. Alonso, I think, held Sainz, maybe. It's 
we've got clear air in front of us now. And Vessi's just like, I'm coming through! <laughs> Using the DRS. We're right behind Russell. We're in 6th and 7th, so we've gained a position with both of our drivers there through the pits. Verstappen's up to ninth. How is Verstappen able to get himself on the cusp of points after the disaster strategy that Red Bull were running? Oh, that's uh, one of the Alphas, Alpha Atari's in the uh, in the mud there. I think that was a crash. Let's take a Vettel goes off into now the wall at this. Tosa. It was the Alpha Tauri driver involved. A definite collision there. No, oh. <laughs> there goes Russell. <laughs> I knew we were putting him under pressure, but wow! Is that a lockup? We can take a look now. Now, just watch the Mercedes here. That lockup could have cost them dearly. Yeah, it has cost him dearly. And the team had such high hopes today. What a yes, show. I know it's the wrong Mercedes. Coast will help. Oh, excuse me. Wow, Alpine the third and fourth. So we lost ground to Alpine. I was hoping we'd be able to jump one of them. It's the right Mercedes. <laughs> I've just got this meme in my head of Farah saying it's the wrong Mercedes, Mr. Water saying it's the right Mercedes underneath Captain America Civil War. <laughs> I think our two guys can leapfrog each other to get onto the back of uh, the Alpines. We're trading fastest laps at the moment. Let's get a bit more battery into Felipe's car. Verstappen's in seventh. Oh, the luck of Verstappen. Look at Perez, he's still all the way down in 17th. Eight seconds off of Schumacher. That is such an old expression, Farah. I haven't actually seen or heard anyone use that for so long. I am wary of uh, an, a, an incident with me pushing the tyres this hard, but we are so close to the back of the Alpines. I want to make sure I get the DRS to help protect from the snapping.
Mike Farrow will be timed out for 3,000 seconds. <laughs> That's 10 timeouts. Someone's enjoying that blue spanner. <laughs> Here comes for snapping. Four more laps, four more laps. Oh, this is going to be a really tense final few laps. Someone else is locked up. It's Hamilton! Hamilton's in the wall at Tosa. Oh, my word. I can hear the cheering and whooping from here. <laughs> ah, I missed the replay. Sorry. <clears throat> Claire's going to win. We're now fighting for a podium. Stop lifting coast. Yeah, probably. We need to charge here, is it? Yeah, probably. Giving it the beans. Two more laps, two more laps. I want to get one of my cars on the podium. Cool a bit. 
save fuel. Love you. Oh, this is so tense. All okay on fuel, so you can do what you want for speed. Love you. Is that Leclerc making a mistake? No, it's not. It's just him going through the chicane. It's Hamilton again. Oh my word. Now, just watch the Mercedes here. He hasn't got a front wing. He still hasn't pitted for a front wing. Where is he? He's 16th. Perez has got him. Jesus. Oh no. Oh, Vesti, Vesti, Vesti. That was the last but one lap. At least stay in the points, please. All right, Freddie, it's all on you. <laughs> Felipe, it's all on you. Can you get one of these Alpines? I don't think you can. Just got to make sure he finishes where he is. Safe fuel, safe fuel. Yeah, got it. I've got to go for it here. This is my last opportunity to force an overtake. Rears are hot. Copy. Use energy. Copy, copy. And that's to my battery. It's not there. But I'll take fourth. I'll happily take fourth, and Vesti is going to hold off sights. Verstappen finishes fifth. He spent half the race on the wrong tyres, and he still finishes fifth. Just a tenth behind us. That's crazy. But we got we got two cars in the points. Fourth and seventh. I will happily, happily take those points. Because they are so hard to come by at the moment. So that is checkered flag. And what a disaster for Hamilton. You know, he led almost the entire race and then with just a handful of laps to go, goes into the wall at Tosa, runs wide, drops all the way back. And he's like, he's 11 and a half seconds off Perez by the time he crosses the line. Today, Aston Martin demonstrated that they can go very far indeed. Not bad at all. The team in the pit will be happy with that. The end this weekend in fifth place in the constructor standings. Coming up next, the teams will be taking a trip to the Sunshine State. The Hard Rock Stadium is laying down the track for a captivating race at the Miami. Best stream so far. <laughs> you ginger tune. Oh man, what a race. This is why I love this circuit. You know, it throws up some amazing racing whenever we come here. We've had some truly memorable races here, especially when it rains. Season 2 with Williams. Season 2 here with Aston Martin. Two incredible wet races. Such drama. Oh, yeah. Um, you say unbelievable by this happened, but as soon as that safety car came out, I knew he would get himself in the points. Um, it was just a question of how high he was going to get. Simply because that Red Bull in his hands is just you know, half a second faster than the closest rival which is his teammate um and so the fact that he was able to unlap himself and get himself basically back in a queue of everybody meant he was always going to get himself back up through the order it was just a question of how high he was going to get fifth was a great result for him um good result for fernando and uh, esteban they both gained considerable numbers of positions there that's big big points for them in the battle with us um 
good result for uh, for Bottas as well. Six places gained. We got four gained from Freddie. He started in 11th. Uh, Felipe did gain two places. We got the fastest lap, but uh, there is no point for fastest lap, which is a bit of a shame. Um, but we do get the bragging rights, which is nice. Uh, McLaren also gaining positions off the start as well. Uh, Mercedes with an absolute shocker. Eight places dropped for Russell, who finished in 13th. 14 places lost for Hamilton. 14 lost for Perez. That's going to really shake up the Drivers' Championship. Let's take a look at the Drivers' Championship. Max extends his lead over his teammates, but only by four points. And Leclerc, with that win, throws himself up into third place. And it's now just nine points off Perez. Uh, Russell with uh, no points gained, but does get ahead of Russell on countback of positions. Uh, Lewis dropping two places to fifth. Ocon and Alonso, big movers in the uh, in the points there. Up three places for Ocon, up five for Alonso. Uh, they are now nine and eight points respectively. Uh, we are also on eight points, no change. But uh, we're in we're in the hunt for a good uh, for a good position. We get a top six finish. I'll be happy. Top five would be even better. Um, for Felipe this season uh, and Freddie gets himself off the mark with his first two points uh, but unfortunately uh, other drivers did gain points that uh, stop him from really gaining any positions in the constructors though we do gain a position we gain seven more points which moves us above McLaren they drop two places and Alpine rock it up as well with 14 points gained they jump us uh, Ferrari overtake Mercedes uh, on uh, on uh, countback because they have a win, which puts them ahead despite the scores being tied. Uh, and they do close the gap a little bit to Red Bull, but despite Red Bull having a shocker, because the points are so much tighter this season with top eight and only 10 points for a win, it's uh, still a big gap, 28 points. It's going to take a lot to overhaul that. And uh, it's a bit of that's a big gap between us and Alpine as well. They are going to be our our closest rival this season, I think. In terms of, we're going to be in a fight with Alpine for fourth. I think we're going to have the the beating of McLaren, uh, and I'm not too worried about Alpha, despite them showing some good pace uh, in this Grand Prix. Good experience points gained for both our drivers. Uh, exceptional race for uh, Freddie, despite the mistake. Uh, 14 overtakes, 9 defense, 8 failed overtakes, 4 failed defenses. Uh, an exceptional for Felipe as well. 9 overtakes, 20, uh, 18 defenses, 11 failed overtakes, and 13 failed defenses. And considering how much they dropped off the pace when we had those spikes of water, I am so proud of, uh, of how well they drove to, to gain those places. Uh, in the in in the race, because they were at one point one and a half seconds slower than everybody else around them, um, when the weather was uh, at that point where adaptability really plays a heavy role in pace in in those conditions. Uh, so yeah, I'm really really pleased with how well they fought back through the field every time the the weather spiked. They had to do it all over again, and they did. Superb driving from our guys there. So we have uh, 11 days now to the next Grand Prix, which is Miami. That's tomorrow night's race. And we have a new suspension, which is coming tomorrow. So we're going to get that out of the way and start work on the other new part as well. Let's just do with our inbox, first of all. Uh, board now have high confidence in our leadership. We'll check in with them. They are absolutely delighted again, which is always good to see. We're well on target for our uh, objective of seventh or above. Uh, and we now have two of the 11 Grand Prix for our long-term objective ticked off. And uh, I think we can probably tick that one off this season. Finances are fine, 17 and a half mil almost. Uh, we're gonna end up with so much money again at the end of the season. That's where our car sits right now, but we do have that new suspension coming, which will improve our brake cooling even more going into the next Grand Prix. Uh, and then uh, we've got a bit of a wait until we get the new floor. 
Um, in fact, no, it's not a new floor, is it? It's a new rear wing, so we've got to start an underfloor. We'll do that now. So, let's uh, go ahead and uh, build those two new suspensions, first of all. So there we can see the improvements it's going to make to our car. It's going to uh, only really, in terms of ranking, improve our acceleration. Uh, but it is going to give us um, some a little bit more top speed, improvements in our cornering, uh, and uh, an extra couple of percent in our braking as well. So uh, while it's not going to have a massive impact, it's going to have nice small incremental improvements on the car. It's going to take uh, five days for one, ten days for two. Grand Prix in ten days. I would like a spare. So we'll rush. Uh, and that will not get this one in time for the Grand Prix itself. So I'm going to emergency manufacture two. Because I'm probably not going to build another suspension for a while. Let's get those fitted. And we will uh, normal manufacture two spares. There we go. So uh, now it's time for us to start work on a brand new underfloor. This is going to be our first major underfloor of the season because we didn't do one in preseason. So we'll throw all of our hours onto this. This is going to hopefully give us a huge performance boost. Oh yeah, look at the difference that's going to make to our speed. Uh, cornering, let's see, airflow sensitivity. I can potentially tweak that a little bit. Let's uh, decrease the uh, improvement in the sensitivity there. Uh, that gives us a nice DRS top speed as well. Acceleration needs a little bit of work, but we can easily sort that. Let's tweak our performance in the cornering slightly. There we go. I'm happy with that. So, uh, we want to throw maximum engineers at this, and we're probably going to rush this. So, 44 days well, means we'll get that just in time for Baku. Perfect. Uh, so, let's go ahead and slap that on the car, which means our rear wing is going to be uh, coming to Baku as well, not Barcelona. Uh, and we've got space for one more part as well. So, uh, let's see, we're on chassis number three, front wing number two. We've just done a front wing, so we probably don't need to do one of those. We could do another side pods, work on our engine cooling. We've just done a suspension. I don't want to do another one of those. Let's do a minor upgrade to our side pods hmm Yeah, let's go down the optimized cooling route. I'll, I'll add a little bit of drag onto the car because I know we've got improvements coming that will reduce that drag again. Really do want to focus on improving our cooling. It's going to hurt our DRS speeds a little bit though. Okay, let's do that. We'll just take a little bit off but that will at least stop us from dropping a rank. What if I push that up a bit more? I can get it to there and then that's still an improvement on everything else. Hmm. 
Now, I kind of want to have uh, a full percentage point on uh, engine cooling. So we'll go with that. Uh, we've got two engineers left. That is also scheduled for 43 days. And uh, you know what? We'll just do normal on that to get a nice big expertise gain for another another side pod later in the year. So that'll be three upgrades coming for Baku. Uh, so we've got to go through Barca, Miami, Barca and Monaco without any more upgrades. But we'll have a really nice comprehensive upgrade package coming for Baku with a new underfloor, a new rear wing and new side pods. That should make our car mighty around the, uh, the streets of Azerbaijan. So that is where we're going to end tonight's stream. Um, one of my, th you know, one of the best races we've had in a while, I think, you know, in terms of just the sheer fun of that race. Uh, some great racing up and down the grid, uh, some bizarre strategy from Red Bull, and they still managed to score points out of it. Uh, we managed to get some points and uh, overcome the horrible weather uh, effects of uh, poor adaptability to to get a really strong finish where we almost managed to squeeze onto the podium in the end uh so i'll be back again tomorrow same time 9 p.m uk time with uh, with miami until then thanks for watching i am jim bob and i'll be back with some more f1 manager very soon <laughs>